Good morning to one and all. I am Dr. Rohit Gopinath and today we will be discussing about a very short but very important nevertheless topic which is sinus and fistula. So what exactly is a sinus? So sinus is a terminology which denotes a hollow or a bay. So it is a blind tract which is lined by granulation tissue and it extends from an epithelial surface into surrounding tissue. So what is a fistula then? So a fistula denotes a flute or a pipe or a tube. That's what the term fistula means. So it extends, it's an abnormal communication with extends between the lumen of one viscous to another viscous or from one viscous to a body surface area or between vessels. In short, it is an abnormal communication between two epithelial surfaces. So to summarize, Sinus is an ablying tract lined by granulation tissue, whereas a fistula is an abnormal communication between two epithelial surfaces. So, what are the various causes of sinuses? So, a sinus can be congenital or acquired. So, the most common congenital sinus that we encounter is a preauricular sinus. And the most more common uh, acquired sinuses that we encounter, especially in India, are tuberculous in nature or it could be because of actinomycosis, pyelonidal sinuses or chronic osteomyelitis. So this here is a series of images which would denote the various acquired causes of sinuses. So this is a patient who presented with a jaw swelling, right sided jaw swelling and on evaluation was found to have a fungal infection which was actinomycosis. And classically, we find that there is a discharging sinus noted at the level of the mandible. And like I said, acnomycosis is one condition wherein the discharge produced by the sinus or the ulcer, which can occur because of it, has a characteristic appearance. So it has the presence of what is called as sulfur granules. So if you have a discharging sinus and on discharge analysis, you find that that discharge has sulfur granules then we are dealing with actinomycosis. So this is a patient, the second uh, picture here shows a patient who presented with a small swelling which broke down to form an a sinus in the natal cleft. So this is a pylonidal sinus. The third patient presented with history of trauma involving the calf region and following the trauma the child, the person started developing a wound which was discharging bits of bone. So this is a patient with a chronic osteomyelitis in which you have bits and chips of bone coming out along with the discharge. And here is the king of all acquired causes of uh, sinuses which is tuberculosis. So tuberculosis remains to date the most common cause for a sinus or fistula especially in the neck region. So this is a patient with a tuberculous sinus involving the lower aspect of the neck. So what are the various causes of fistulas? So similar to sinuses, even fistulas can be congenital or acquired. Common causes for congenital fistulas would be a bronchial fistula where a, and a tracheoesophageal fistula or an arteriovenous fistula. And common examples of acquired fistulas are intestinal acnomycosis, tuberculosis, etc. To facilitate easy remembrance and to categorize various acquired causes of fistula, we can divide them into either traumatic, inflammatory or malignant. So traumatic acquired fistulas would occur post-surgery or post-trauma of any, any instance, for example, like a road traffic accident or anything of that sort or post-instrumentation. An inflammatory acquired fistula would occur post uh, chronic infections like intestinal acnomycosis or intestinal tuberculosis or it could even be need not even be intestinal any tuberculosis can lead on to it or it could be chronic inflammatory conditions like Crohn's etc. Malignancies can also cause acquired fistulas but when you have a malignancy involving one hollow viscous which erodes into another adjacent hollow viscous resulting in an abnormal communication between these two. Fistulas can also be divided into external or internal fistulas. When the opening of the fistula is noted to the exterior, then it is an external fistula. 
If you have a fistula between two hollow viscous viscera or within the body, the opening of which is not seen to the naked eye, then we call it as an, an, as an internal fistula. So, these are some examples of uh, fistulas. So, this here is a child who presented with a small fistulous opening on the, uh, on the lower aspect of the right neck. And you can see that this opening, according to history, was present right from birth and occasionally discharges mucoid material. So, typically, a branchial fistula is located in relation to the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid, as you can see here. And it is particularly related to the lower third of the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. Classically, these sinuses discharge only mucoid material, can get infected, and when it gets infected, then the discharge can be purulent. So, this here is a classical example of the most common type of a tracheoesophageal fistula. So, it would be wrong to call this condition as only tracheoesophageal fistula, it's basically esophageal atresia with a tracheoesophageal fistula. So, this here is a type C esophageal atresia with a tracheoesophageal fistula, wherein you have a blind ending upper pouch and a lower pouch which is communicating with the airway. So, this is a common cause for frothing of saliva and distress in the newborn period, which is surgically correctable. So, this here is a patient who has large, as you can see from the picture, there are large dilated vessels noted there. So, this is a patient with an arteriovenous fistula. So, an arteriovenous fistula can, it can be traumatic or it can be surgically brought about or it can be congenital. So, you find that in an arteriovenous fistula, one of the most important findings would be arterialization of veins. So, you find that the veins tend to get characteristics of the artery because of their abnormal communication between these two. It is particularly uh, useful in patients who are undergoing dialysis because you might have noticed a lot of patients, CKD or chronic kidney disease patients tend to have a AV fistula placed to facilitate dialysis. So, this here is a common surgical complication that we encounter which is an intracutaneous fistula. So, here you find that there is fecal and discharge from the wound site. Along with that, there is cross extensive erythema of the surrounding skin, classical of an intracutaneous fistula. 